Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to BBC London. I'm Alice Sulfield. A train travelling to Waterloo Station derailed this morning after it struck an object on the line. Network Rail says all passengers were safely escorted from the train, but disruption is expected until the end of today with lines blocked between Woking and London Waterloo. Tolu Adeoye is at Waterloo for us now. And Tolu, what more do we know about what happened there? Well, Network Rail says it was at around 5.50 a.m. this morning when that train that was on its way into London Waterloo hit an object in the Walton-on-Thames area. Uh, we know that there was essential work being carried out over the weekend in that part um, of our patch, and it has not been confirmed, though, whether those things uh, were both linked. We know, as you said, that no one was injured and all passengers were safely escorted from the train, but lines are blocked through the area, and we've had this image from Network Rail of the derailment. They've told us uh, in a statement, early investigations show the front wheels of the train are derailed, therefore it's likely to take us some time to get the railway reopened. We're really sorry for the disruption and will update customers on the repairs and timescale for reopening as we know more. Now this service was being run by South Western Railway, it was one of their, their services. Uh, if we show you now the trains that are backed up at the station. Uh, we've been here for some time and they've nothing's come in or out. South Western Railway has told us the incident in the Walton-on-Thames area means the Woking line is blocked and train services can't run. There's also a knock-on impact on services on other parts of the network as trains and crew are displaced. So that explains what we're seeing at the station today. Uh, we have been told that people will be able to use their tickets uh, tomorrow if they don't use them today. Everyone's being uh, urged to check before they travel. Uh, but as you can imagine, not a great start for commuters on Monday. Absolutely. Tolu, thank you. The O2 Academy Brixton will reopen next month, 16 months after a deadly crush at the venue in South London. Security guard Gabby Hutchinson and concertgoer Rebecca Icamello were killed when fans without tickets tried to force their way into a gig. The BBC Crime Watch programme has also issued an appeal today for people to come forward who may have any images or footage of what happened. The Brixton Academy in South London has been closed for well over a year. Now the company which owns it has said it will reopen with new safety measures. Two people died during a crush at the venue. The police investigation is still ongoing and the families of security guard Gabby Hutchinson and concertgoer Rebecca Icomelo have spoken to the BBC Crime Watch programme. I saw the doctor. I said, no, I can't. I can't go and see her. My, my heart was broken. The shock was, diff was very, very difficult to process that time. I spoke to Rebecca about just three days before the event. I never knew that that was the last time I would, I would see her. Gabby went to work to keep people safe so they could enjoy a concert and she never made it home. When we finally got to the hospital, they just told us that she was in a coma. She was just laying there like she was asleep. She looked so beautiful, but she wasn't there. And I just remember going up to her and giving her a hug and a kiss and just saying, please wake up. So a year on, we know people have videos, they have pictures, they know things. And if they would come forward to help the police in their investigation, it would bring a lot of closure, I suppose. Aisha Baksh with that report. And to watch the full episode, search for Crime Watch Live on the iPlayer. The Conservative MP Paul Scully has announced he'll step down at the next election. Last week, the Member of Parliament for Sutton, Cheam and Worcester Park was criticised for his comments about parts of Tower Hamlets being no-go areas. He since said it had been a poor choice of words. Mr Scully's departure is one of more than 60 by Tory MPs who say they won't fight their seats at the next election. As we've been hearing, the RNLI is marking its 200th anniversary today. The charity began with a meeting in the London Tavern in Bishopsgate in 1824 with a commitment to save lives at sea. But it wasn't until 2002 that the River Thames got its own dedicated lifeboats along with four lifeboat stations. Thousands of people have now been rescued from the Thames, a river that can pose a host of challenges, as Victoria Hollins has been finding out. 
Tucked away in the archives of the RNLI, the story of how the charity set up to save lives at sea began on dry land in central London 200 years ago. On the 4th of March 1824 in the city of London Tavern, a group of men got together to establish the charity. And what we have here are the minutes of the very first meeting. What they're setting out here is the core principles of the organisation. The London Tavern Meeting House is long gone, but at the base of a gleaming tower in Bishopsgate, a tribute carved in stone remains. The record of the first meeting reads like a who's who of 19th century London society. The person chairing the meeting was the Archbishop of Canterbury, lots of MPs, uh, City of London MPs. One of those MPs was William Wilberforce, the uh, sort of famous anti-slavery campaigner. Decades later, the RNLI's storeyard was built in Poplar, where damaged lifeboats were repaired. The local boat building community also crafted the vessels. But it would take the Marchioness disaster on the Thames in August 1989 for a dedicated lifeboat service to even be considered. 51 people lost their lives when the party boat collided with a dredger. Nearly 13 years later, in 2002, the Thames lifeboats came into service after a fundamental review of emergency response procedures on the river. Janet Kelly helped set up and then ran the Tower lifeboat station for 14 years. The, um, the Thames division, which is part of the Metropolitan Police, they didn't want their Waterloo Police Pier, which is by Waterloo Bridge. The police were very, um, very generous and allowed the RNLI to buy the pier for a, a token sum of a pound. But it was a very useful spot to have, I suppose. For us in, in the middle of London, to be where we were there was priceless. The Thames lifeboats have been called out more than 18,000 times since 2002 and saved dozens of lives. So what would its founders think of the charity today? I think they'd be very proud indeed of where we've, where we've come. Um, they. Uh, would also recognise huge elements of, of the RNLI today and what they thought about all those years ago. A celebration then of courage, commitment and donations that have helped save thousands of lives across two centuries. Victoria Hollins, BBC London. Time now to get a check on the weather. Here's Kate Kinsella. Good afternoon. It was a bright start this morning. Some sunshine, yes, but also a little bit of frost. Temperatures down below zero overnight last night. Now, as we head through this afternoon, we've still got some bright, some sunny spells. Turning hazier, though, we've got more cloud and it will increase as we head towards the evening. Temperatures a little milder than the weekend at 12 Celsius. Now, into this evening overnight, we're seeing outbreaks of rain slowly clearing away eastwards through the early hours. It's drier with some clearer spells. That cloud breaks up. The wind lights, I could see some mist and fog patches forming minimum temperature dropping to three celsius so for tomorrow morning any mist and fog you do get will lift we'll get some bright spells some sunny spells some cloud around and that brings the chance of some showers they could be quite heavy for a time temperatures tomorrow again mild the breeze coming from the south we're looking at a maximum of 12 celsius now for wednesday it's looking largely dry ridge of high pressure builds the wind quite light as well as we head through wednesday and thursday although the chance of some showers for thursday towards the end of the week the wind starts starts to pick up so quite a blustery day for Friday but it is looking largely dry with some sunny spells more unsettled for the weekend but the temperature throughout this week is a little milder we're looking at maximums in double figures that's all from the lunch team but as always you can find more news and features on our website including the story of the rare Ferrari recovered 28 years after it was stolen from ex Formula One driver Gerhard Berger Thanks for watching. Have a lovely afternoon. Bye-bye.